The former leader of the Proud Boys was arrested just yesterday in Miami. And we have some footage of the actual arrest. It was not the most dignified thing, but take a look at this. Okay, so you can see Enrique Tarrio, a 38 year old there. Um, I, could they have not have given him a little bit more note? I mean, maybe they were worried he would flee or something like that. But as much as I'm not a fan of anyone in the Proud Boys, I don't need a person to be dragged away in their underwear. I, do, I don't like it when it's not awful people. But anyway, you can see him there. He uh, was arrested, indicted on one count of each uh, of conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of an official proceeding, as well as two counts each of assaulting, resisting, or impeding certain officers and destruction of government property in the Capitol breach. Now, notably, uh, Enrique Tarrio was not actually there on the 6th. So he had been arrested in Washington two days before the insurrection, charged with vandalizing a Black Lives Matter banner at a historic black church. So, you know, classy guy there. Um, that was in December of 2020. So he had been uh, arrested before the 6th. The day before the Capitol was attacked, a judge ordered him to stay out of Washington. He served a five month sentence in that case. But, um, now there's new new charges in relation to the planning and all of that. Uh, they claim that he led the advanced planning, remained in contact with other members of the Proud Boy during the actual breach. Also, it's alleged that he claimed credit for what happened on social media and in encrypted chat rooms before and during the attack. So uh, while he was not himself there, he'd been sort of legally restricted from doing so, Jordan. Apparently, they're alleging he was still involved in what happened on the 6th. I mean, yeah, he's obviously implicated in in a lot of this. He's, you know, the Proud Boys are a, a purely, uh, you know, evil force. But I I, I want to echo some of the the stuff I see in the chat, and I think what you pointed out. But also, it just it boils down to, you know, the core of how we want to reform policing in this country. And look, as much as we hate this guy, like, yeah, I think doing that, like, just let him put on clothes. Like mm -hmm. these types of like perp walks are just designed to humiliate people and cast them negatively in the court of public opinion. Look, we already hate them. We're not going to like them. But like, come on, there's just like basic treatment for people in the criminal justice system. It's like something that we should do. And again, hate this guy, but let him put on clothes. Like treat him like a normal person. Like let treat anyone like a normal person. Because when we push for reforms in the policing system, we push for better treatment of people who are, you know, maybe on our side or we sympathize with. We're going to want those same treatments for them as well. So just demand it across the board. Be consistent in our ideals. Yeah, and I appreciate you you saying that. It, it, we need to be consistent. They're not going to be. That should not stop us from being. It, for some people, yeah. you know, the stereotypical like Twitter lib, like no, they're bad. So we get we get to be just as bad, if not more so. If not more so, because we're right. So we get to be worse because we're right. No, we sh we should be good people. We should live our values. Um, if he did these things that he's alleged to do, he should be arrested. We, we don't need to, to, to make it worse than that. Um, really fast, so I did wanna also let you know that the first January 6th defendant to stand trial for what happened on the 6th uh, was found guilty of all charges. This is uh, Guy Rafi, uh, five counts faced for leading uh, part of the, the mob that attacked on the 6th. Uh, his trial featured video he took with a camera mounted on his helmet and searing testimony from his own son who tipped the FBI to concerns about his father. And that is hardly unique. Many family members and friends were the ones that saw the social media posts and things like that and identified these people after they got out of Washington. So the legal cases over January 6th, I know it's a super slow process. Those are continuing and we are starting to see some legal consequences. Any thoughts, Jordan? This certainly undercuts everyone's, you know, on the rights argument that oh, wasn't that big big of a deal? Why are there no XYZ? You know, that that moving goalpost that became why are they not calling it a this? Why has nobody been charged with that? It's like, well, it's this is a slow process. It's like bureaucracy in the judicial system does not work overnight. So it's running its course. It's okay. But yeah, yeah. not surprising. I mean they're like they're I think a lot of people in the federal legal system are like out for blood. Because this is this was pretty heinous, and people died as a result. It's it was fueled by insane conspiracies. Like this is you're going to see much much more of this. Yeah. Um, 
And if he does end up you know, going to prison, at least this current president for all the problems I have with him isn't gonna pardon him. So that's something. Yeah. Um, remember the stuff Trump was saying about uh, the Proud Boys. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.